Yeah, thanks very much. A um, few words about myself. I am a doctoral researcher at the German Aerospace Center in Berlin, and I have been a founding member and member of the board of DRZ. I've resigned some like two years back. Um, so most of my talk is going to be about the wee sister of the Society of RSE, which is DRC, Society for Research Software in Germany. Um, and I'd also like to talk about some things that have happened over the last couple of years in Germany that have affected us positively, mostly, um, and give you an insight about in, in some of the initiatives that have been started in that um, time frame. So yeah, uh, this is just an overview. So I'll give you a very brief history I'll talk a bit about the uh, society itself and then talk about outreach and community building, which is an ongoing process, as you can ima imagine. And um, we've been involved in some politics, policies and guidelines discussions. And I'll talk about two things that have been important for the RSE and the German RSE community over the last years. We started out um, to be the runner up. Um, you can fight us, Dutch people. Uh, of the oldest RSC association, um, well, outside of the UK, uh, in 2016, when uh, I think five, five or six people attended the first conference, um, went back, came back home and said, this is something that we need in Germany as well. So um, a couple of us sat down and thought about this and how, how to do this. And the first thing we did was set up a national association, charitable organization in 2018. Um, without really doing much community building beforehand. So that caused some issues maybe later on down the line. We ran our first conference in 2019 in Potsdam, uh, much about the same weather as here. Um, great conference, around 200 people from all over the place, including um, some of the neighboring countries and the UK. And then we sat down with the community, um, community of DFG funded projects who were involved in the first call around resource software sustainability and wrote a paper about the situation we were facing in Germany in terms of research software and research software sustainability and what we thought would be um, pathways into a better future for sustainable research software in Germany and beyond. At that time, we had achieved charitable status as the uh, society. We had a very generic board structure, which means that we were a typical German Verein, six people on the board, um, and that's it. And we had, by that time, already four regional chapters. So we kind of bootstrapped some of the stuff earlier on. You've seen the society, I think, started a little later to um, have regional chapters. Um, around about 50 formal members of the society. We had a mailing list. And early on, we decided to reuse um, infrastructure provided by GWDG and the University of Göttingen, an instance of Rocket Chat, which is a persistent chat but it doesn't have any workspace or team notion, which again, proved to be a bit difficult down the line. So today the society has a website in German and English, which is a pain to maintain. Um, still six board members, around about 70 formal members. So growing slowly on that front, we do have a much larger community, um, which we define as being members of or active in the chat and on the mailing list which sees lots of job adverts mentioning actually the term research software engineer, which is great. Um, lots of discussion going on as well, especially um, around this time uh, in the last couple of weeks around a thing called the Blue Angel for research software. So we've had this Blue Angel on products in the past, which was meant to signify um, specific value in terms of uh, being ecological. Um, Nine, we've grown to nine local and or regional chapters, and there's been initial meetings of uh, German RSE groups, which we had some trouble identifying um, in the at the beginning because the term research software engineering or RSE hadn't really um, pervaded. I think it's the word the whole the whole community. So yeah, finding finding and identifying these groups uh, was pretty hard. So they got together, and I think they're in the process of writing up. Um, the lessons they've learned in setting up RSC groups in Germany as well in another position paper, which is one of the formats we chose to to uh, speak about what we're doing in the society. Since 2019, we've had uh, some more virtual and in-person conferences, started off with particip participation in SOURCE um, during the pandemic, which was a year-long enterprise to bring research software engineering 
discussions, contents, talks, etc., to the people via the internet. And that was great. Um, we then tagged on to the German Society for Computer Sciences Software Engineering Conference and had our own track. So that was very closely coupled. Uh, we decoupled that a bit this February when we ran the first in-person post-pandemic proper um, conference in Jena as co-located with the SE conference. And it was just great to, you know, um, bring bring back all the people in person and and do what we couldn't do in two years before that. We are uh, going to have our very first unconference, dedicated unconference over two and a, well, two and a half days uh, in just about two weeks time. We're going to gather the community to um, discuss things in research software in general, but also how to improve the society and the way it works, how to create better value for the members, how to better fulfill the mission, um, define the mission perhaps in the first place, like properly. Um, so that's going to be very, very interesting. All in all, I would say that DRZ, although being a relatively new and relatively small society, has already had some impact in German academia specifically, it's seen as a relevant partner in, um, well, different kinds of projects that uh, have to do with research software, but also as the driving force behind bringing research software to the fore um, in terms of um, recognition for software and creating new job roles, building the community, uh, self letting people self-identify with the role of RSC, et cetera. We've also learned over the last years that community building is hard work. So some of the future changes we're currently looking at, and I think the unconference will hopefully play a, a big role in, in uh, making progress there uh, because we want these changes to happen with and for the community, obviously, is to think about an extended board structure, perhaps modeled on something similar to what the UK society has or something that is differently, but perhaps better suited to the German uh, set up. We're looking into building a better online community, and that's mostly through infrastructure, which, which means probably changing the platform we're currently using for chat, because that's not really been working that well. Um, we want to um, encourage regular exchange between members and leaders of the different RSC groups uh, that we have in Germany, and like I said, just want to be in touch better with the whole community to figure out what we can do as a society to create, well, better value, for lack of a better phrase. So, outreach and community building. Um, Germany, much as, I guess, most other countries, is has a very fragmented uh, academic community. And that's because there are disciplines, um, there are Additionally, in Germany, 16 federal states who are each of them in charge of their own education sector, etc. Um, we have initiatives like the NFDI. I'm going to talk about this a bit later on, which is the National Research Data Infrastructure, which has is is a is a, a, com, a component organization of disciplinary uh, consortia, but lacks or has lacked in the past a bit of kind of. Uh, horizontal structure in terms of cross-cutting topics such as research software. There's been some great work done by people in the room as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about this in just a second. Um, like I said, what, what's worked really well um, in trying to bring together this fragmented community is run events. This is really the one thing that I think has had the most impact on the community in the past. Um, also, there is a shared community call every month um, and that's by the German RSC community and the German Open Science community and the German Reproducibility Network. And it's seen a core, mem core number of people uh, returning to the calls, around about 20 people on average that uh, use this call as a good way to exchange knowledge, things they've learned, et cetera, and just general news as well. And two initiatives have been trying to raise the recognition for research from Germany by way of an award. So we've had in 2022, the Campus Source Award awarded by DRC on one hand and the Campus Source um, Association on the other hand, which is uh, dealing with infrastructure and in universities mostly. And this year we'll see the first edition of the Helmholtz Incubator Software Award 
So Helmholtz is an association um, whose members are research centers in Germany, non-universities, um, and they are, I think, the, the largest um, body in research in Germany. And they've come together and said, we want to make software more visible. Um, and yeah, so all the centers can can submit the best software they think have a, have a chance of winning this award. And then hopefully we'll see great tools that are being built across the board. Um, I've talked a bit about the online community, so there's going to be a platform change. And then one specific project, um, also from Helmholtz, has become a very, a, a very strong a force in community building in Germany. And that's Hills PS, which is also a Helmholtz project, like I said. Um, it, it is a, it's a pro project that, is, that has a dedicated track for community building and networking. And so they run seminars and events, hack events. Um, they've had a summer of testing. Uh, they're doing high performance computing benchmarking thons, continuous benchmarking. So that's interesting. But uh, they've also landed the coup by uh, employing a person as a community manager. And that's, of course, your own ex, your own, our, our own Claire Wyatt. And she's doing a great job also helping in the in the national framework to to bring DRC um, to help DRC build build our community in Germany. Um, the society uh, the society has been involved in some policies and politics things initiatives. We've endorsed the public money public code um, initiative by the FSFE, um, which calls for code that's been funded by the by public money, basically by taxpayer money, to be to be open, and we. Uh, came to them saying that they, they, they focused on mostly public sector uh, software in the beginning, but we made them aware that there's a whole bunch of uh, open source tools or tools being developed uh, with taxpayer money in research. And so um, we're working with them to make sure that where it's possible, um, software that is funded by public money isn't being made public under open source licenses. Signed the software heritage, uh, built, uh, wrote, wrote a software heritage testimonial. We also partic participated in a consultation for the Research Data Act. And of course, the Research Data Act would also have an impact on software, although it's not in the title. Um, this is an ongoing process. It's actually going to be um, embedded in law at some, at some point, and we felt it was very necessary to uh, make the voice of research software in Germany heard there as well. Like I said, there's two two position papers in progress. I mentioned one, which is about RSE groups in Germany, and there is one about RSE education resources, and that's just a vehicle for us to to uh, write down our thoughts about um, topics in research software. Something that's very well doesn't sound very exciting, but actually has been very exciting is that the largest German basic basic research funder, uh, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft has in 2022 um, issued a new edition of their guidelines for safeguarding good research practice. And the version before that, uh, we, we counted the, the, the occurrences of the uh, string software in it, um, uh, n equals zero. And in 2022, the new version has at least 13, mention, uh, 13 mentions of software. And um, importantly, software is being mentioned in different contexts. So in terms of quality assurance, DFG, and those guidelines are binding for all the projects that are DFG funded. Source code of publicly available software must be persistent, citable, and documented, which is great. Program uh, software program by researchers must be made publicly available along with the source code and an appropriate license. Of course, that's a bit fuzzy kind of phrase, but um, there are many different use cases that can't do open source software. Um, they recognize that software authorship is actually a thing. And so people contributing to software should be treated and given the credit um, in a way similar to the way uh, paper authors are credited. And they call for publication um, of software and importantly, publica software publications being um, evaluated on a similar level, say, um, than, than uh, text publications. And they also call for the archival, long-term archival of software that's being used and that's being developed. Um, another policy that's had an impact or will have an impact on specifically the Helmholtz centers in Germany um, is the new Helmholtz Open Science Policy, um, which has, again, binding for those projects being funded under from Helmholtz, uh, a detailed research software management procedure. 
um, should be in place by 2025. But very excitingly, they have introduced a basic indicator for citable research software publications, very close to my heart. Um, and the idea is that you have to publish or you should publish your software um, persistently with a persistent identifier and with metadata that makes it citable um, if, you want, if you want to be evaluated based on your software work. So that's a great start. By 2024, they want to also introduce the notion of software quality to this indicator. And the indicator can be used by Helmholtz centers to also be used as a KPI to evaluate um, institutions and groups and individuals perhaps. I'm not sure what the quality indicator will look like. It's going to be hard work uh, trying to find this out, but it's very exciting for sure that there's something happening there. As mentioned before, the National Research Data Infrastructure um, has been, it's basically funded by the DFG as well, many millions of euros. Um, disciplinary consortia have been set up over three rounds and software as a cross-cutting topic was originally disregarded, which is why DRC stepped up and said, we want to have an NFDI, uh, RC for an FDI initiative or consortium. Um, we couldn't get this through, but we've, we've become a member as the, as the society um, of the NFDI Association. And in the meantime, because um, we've had great feedback from almost all the consortia saying that, yes, research software is a very important topic. You can't think data without software. And um, there have been some initiatives, especially, especially in the section Common Infrastructures, which has a working group on research software engineering, I think, led by Jan. Blaming. Okay, so so there are subgroups working working in this in in this section, and we have a research of a metadata section um, a working group in the in the section metadata terminology provenance. So research software is being taken care of, if not as a dedicated consortium, and there has been a proposal for a common NFDI common research software directory in the section basic services, and then just over a month ago, I think, maybe just a month ago. Um, we have formalized the long-standing friendship and collaboration with the Society for Computer Science in Germany, Gesellschaft für Informatik, um, in that we have um, created a common working group. We've had a memorandum of understanding about, you know, kind of how we wanted to um, tackle the topic of, of, of research software, both from the GI point of view and the DRC point of view, and things like um, becoming, like, shared membership so you have get a discount if you were a member of the one society and of the other but uh, the the working group research software engineering has been set up to really uh, bring the two communities together create an interface for knowledge knowledge exchange but also um, do some specific work um, on the like, best of both worlds basically computer science based research on research software and this is uh, what's what's happened um in the last month or so, and we've set up some some working groups, and so expect to hear from from them um, in the future, hopefully. And finally, um, we do run a conference next year as well. So save the date if you want to come along. You're very 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 welcome. Um, I would hazard a guess again that the conference will be mostly English speaking. 90%, 92%, I think we had this year but two or three talks in German, but the rest of it was in English. So very welcome to attend DRC24 in the lovely town of Würzburg in March 2024. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so a few questions there. So let's start off with the top one. So since it's so fragmented, what is the best way to get involved? If you're looking to connect to a network with colleagues, um, not only in an institution, but on a national scale, um, a very a relatively easy thing to do is join the mailing list or join the chat, um, ideally the new chat, uh, get in touch with other people. And that's really the first step to becoming a member of the community. And um, if you want to get more involved, you be can become a member of the society, of course. Um, which will generate income for the society to run events such as conferences and also to um, give people funding for their ideas, which isn't really formalized, but there is um, a process being developed that where you can get funding for, for your event ideas. And uh, so that's definitely possible. Uh, you can step up and become a member of the board in the upcoming elections. <laughs> um, 
it's you know if I can do it, then it should be possible <laughs> for you to do it easily. Um, yeah, so there's different steps you can do. You can you can make. Um, you can just order a couple of stickers from DRZ and spread them and talk to your colleagues about it. So those are, I guess, the best ways to to become involved and meet new people. Um, yeah. Um, so you can also as a website and there's people already involved. You know, we have this map where you can uh, also add yourself. Around Germany, and then maybe you find your name there. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so just for, for those online, online can, yeah, yeah, um, uh, Jan was saying that there is a map on the DRC website which tries to uh, show you where RZ self identified RZs are based already, or where you have local chapters, regional chapters, which is a great way to get involved with colleagues in your area. So, if you look at those uh, data on the map, you can potentially find people close to you and you can just hook up and you know, connect with them and then um, yeah, take away from there. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next question, can you say a bit more about the chat platform issues that you mentioned? Yes, um, I think the underlying issues are twofold. There has been the cultural issue of um, having to decide between big tech and open source. And in and also and also uh, funding for such a platform, um, we have originally decided to go with um, Rocket Chat, which, like I said, doesn't have at least not this instance doesn't have um, the notion of teams or workspaces. You can't really organize channels into one for for one coherent uh, purpose or community, and that's proved a bit of a problem. Um, also because the number of different chat solutions used by people in Germany are very, very different. And Rocket Chat doesn't rank really high in that list of tools that people are already using. So it would, would have been just another tool um, for many. Um, I think that we're in the process of solving this. Well, I know that we're in the process of solving this. So um, community manager Claire Wyatt and my line manager Karina um, are currently testing, I think, two tools, um, which we're thinking about moving to. It's not going to be Slack for different reasons, cultural reasons, but also um, um, data security reasons. So, yeah, hopefully we'll find a good solution that will um, that we'll be able to to transfer or uh, move the community to. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting. Right. Okay. Um, so this. Uh, the next question, um, do you feel that people in the community engage via online tools or they prefer in-person opportunities for community activities? But both. <laughs> um, I don't think there, there is a clear preference for either of the two. Um, we've sold a great number of tickets for the last conference, so uh, post-lockdowns post and pandemic-ish. Um, and from what I've heard, the feedback was very, very positive to be able to meet up in person, but also the number of uh, more sustainable online activities has been growing constantly, not least because uh, Claire's team has been running a number of online series, etc. And they, they seem to be well attended, at least the ones I know of. Um, so I can't really say. I guess... In a country the size of Germany, for some people, it would be easier if they had something like a user group meeting or a you know a, a pub meet some some sometime with with some colleagues. And I think that probably in person events or just meetings or just meeting one colleague is perhaps easier for bringing on board new people. But you tell me. Okay. Um. So we are pretty much out of time. But since we we don't have a um, a next speaker, we'll take just a couple of uh, the last questions. So I'm actually quite interested to hear your answer to the one at the bottom, but we'll come to the one at the, that's at the top first. Um, so what about other large research networks that were not mentioned? And there's a list there, Max Planck, um, Leibniz, et cetera. Yes, they weren't mentioned because they have not been very visible to me. And that may be the only reason why they haven't been mentioned. And um, there is... Um, a person from Max Planck on the board of the ERC who's been very, very active. Um, he's also be he's also been a co-founding member, uh, Stefan Janos. Um, 
and he would be better uh, positioned to answer this question. I know from um, attending workshops and giving talks at Workshops in Leibniz that they have similar um, initiatives, uh, specifically in the mathematical modeling community. Um, they run uh, workshops which are very much in the direction of research software engineering as well. Uh, just don't call them that. Uh, so I know there's stuff going on in Leibniz. I'm not very sure about Fraunhofer. I haven't heard much about uh, Fraunhofer. Um, how can we bring them aboard? Um, we would have to identify champions, I guess, people from those communities and associations or networks uh, that we could bring, you talk to and bring bring to attend conferences or just be be part of the of the conversation. Um, but yeah, I don't really have an answer to that. Uh, Max Planck is involved and they, the people involved in DRC from Max Planck know what's going on there and they, they've seen the issues um, they have, they're having, whereas I more or less see issues that Helmholtz is having and stuff that Helmholtz is doing. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we'll take one more question for, and then we'll officially end the session, but I'm sure there'll be time for anybody who's in the room who wants to, to ask the speakers any other questions. Um, so, um, in fact, the question, yeah, so the question I was going to um, ask was one that's now at the top about the RC community has done a lot, a lot in the UK, um, including the SSI, who've obviously been, been working very hard in this space. Uh, do you reuse some of their work or policies um, or do you work in collaboration with them or do you try and recreate most of it? That's a very good question. Um, we have, as the association, definitely started off by modelling uh, both the association and some of the community initiatives around what we've seen would happen in the UK. Uh, some of that worked really well, some of it not not really. Um, so I think we've made one, in hindsight, it's easy to say one error in setting up the association before actually building the community and doing more community building. Also because we were a very, very small core group in the very beginning, it was just six people. Um, trying to you know, make things up from the top of our heads, uh, looking at what the specifically the the, the associate well, UKRZ association back in the day uh, was doing then. Um, in terms of policies, I don't really know. Um, in some ways, although the association has existed for quite a number of years now, we're still very much at the beginning of thinking about how to well, what what the actual mission of the society is and how to fulfill it then. Um, most of the energy has been gone into organizing the conference, trying to build community, trying to maintain community over the pandemic, which was a really uh, tough thing because, you know, what's been happening and for a much smaller community, it's much harder to to sustain it over a, over a pandemic, I think. Um, so I think we've learned a lot from trying to recreate what, some things. And we've also learned that we have to do our own thing in some parts. 